Good morning, Robert Scribbler. It is May 16th, 2019. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about a predicted long duration severe weather outbreak that is expected to threaten 18 states or more, according to this AccuWeather report with dangerous storms and potential tornadoes over a period of time running from Friday and well into next week. And I'm going to talk about this severe, potential severe weather outbreak in terms of the predicted conditions, as well as how human forced climate change may be influencing these weather patterns in way that in ways that are increasing the likelihood and potential for severe weather. Now, looking at the NOAA's uh, Q, uh, QPF forecast for the next seven days, we see that there is a potential for, for very substantial rainfall over the central U.S. in particular and running in through large portions of the western U.S. The reason for this is that we are seeing a very strong storm track running in from the Pacific Ocean as well as an extraordinary amount of moisture coming in out that both the Pacific Ocean sea surface temperatures and the Gulf of Mexico sea surface temperatures are running above average to well above average. This is helping to pump more moisture into the atmosphere and is helping to seed the ground for severe weather in at least one respect, which is heavy rainfall, as well as the potential for severe storms feeding on this excess moisture. Now, looking at the storm track, what we see in the global forecast system model for the next seven days is, is, a, is a very robust storm track running in through the western U.S. This uh, storm track will provide some energy for storms as well as it help to add to jet stream strength and, and instability in the central U.S. In injecting both storms and moisture into the western U.S. and which then run in through the central U.S. where the predicted powerful storms are likely to fire. You can see the storm track in the earlier portions of this model here running very intensely. Um, we've spoken about moisture and I'd just like to show you the precipitable moisture levels predicted to run in through the central U.S. in particular, spiking to tropical levels, levels that are typically seen in the tropics as moisture moves north from the Gulf of Mexico and is fueled by the consistent storm track running in through the west, showing elevated moisture levels uh, across the, the west as well. Note these uh, swirls coming down. These are storm systems developing in the central U.S. and then running off toward the east. This is in part fueled by instability and cool air being injected from the north, which is also another ingredient for severe weather. Now, one other aspect of the present severe weather pattern that may help to fuel tornadoes is a good deal of smoke that is presently being emitted by large wildfires over southern Mexico and running in through the Gulf of Mexico. And as southerly winds coming up from the Gulf of Mexico push these smoke particles into the central U.S., these smoke particles can tend to provide some extra kick for storms. And th there's some research that I'm going to talk about in a little bit that indicates that fires in Central America and related smoke can help to increase tornado potential intensity if the smoke particles end up getting entrapped over the central U.S. So all of these factors are combining to increase the potential for severe weather outbreaks across the U.S. and into the central U.S. And I'd just like to point out that weather observers and meteorologists are noting that the, this projected severe weather outbreak is, is something that we haven't really seen before, at least since 
the uh, Storm Prediction Center's operational products for severe weather outlooks came into effect in 2007. So this is at present, at least as of uh, yesterday, the longest running predicted period of severe weather for the US since we began tracking severe weather potentials. Now, a lot of storm chasers are, are going to be headed out to the central US, but for me, what I'm most interested in is talking about the overall context and why this extended severe weather outbreak likely has a, a climate change influence. And the first reason is that if you, if you look at um, some of the recent science coming out and, and the, the responsible reporting by uh, Climate Central, it is that a warmer atmosphere holds more water vapor in suspension for every one degree Celsius of increase, you end up with about six to 8% increase in water vapor in suspension over the earth. And this is due to increased rates of evaporation from oceans and land masses into the earth and due to the fact that the physical nature of the atmosphere is such that as it warms, it's able to hold more of that moisture in suspension. Well, what does this mean overall? It means that warmer air means both more evaporation and more precipitation, and you end up with more extremes both on the dry side and on the wet side. Now, on the dry side, this can mean more intense droughts, more, in more intense wildfires, so a higher potential, particularly in forests, large wet forests that experience drying more than they would typically, you have a higher risk of fire. And so we have the Central American fires at present, which are abnormally intense, injecting more than typical amounts of smoke into the atmosphere, which adds to some tornado potential, as we'll see later. And on the flip side, you also have more moisture coming from warmer than normal ocean surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico and in the Pacific, which is also helping to provide more fuel for, for storms because not only is moisture storm fuel, but expanding areas of moist air are also what drives convection in storms. So, so you're, you're getting extra loading in all these forms. Now, one other influence, one other climate change related influence was recently identified by Dr. Michael Mann, and it's an influence on a warming polar environment providing more high amplitude jet stream waves and more persistent jet stream waves in certain regions. And so what that means is you tend to have more persistent troughs and more persistent ridges and and more extensive ridging and troughing in those zones. Over the central U.S. recently, we and the eastern U.S. recently, we've had a consistent stormy trough-related pattern, and, which, which appears to have been stuck in place. We've had storm after storm after storm for, for a long period of time, and this recent spate of severe weather is related to this overall pattern. In relationship to Dr. Mann's recent scientific findings, I'd just like to point out that at present, the polar environment in the Northern Hemisphere is rather warmer than normal. And according to these, these scientific research findings, this warmer than normal polar environment is the primary ingredient for developing these fixed weather patterns, uh, particularly as we get into summer. So, so a number of ingredients related to human-caused climate change that are helping to fuel into the present predicted severe weather outbreak. One more I'd like to talk about, which, which I did point out earlier and also in an earlier blog, is recent science finding that burning of forests in Central America can increase tornado severity in the US. And so what we are seeing now is very intense wildfires in Central America and the smoke particles from the Central American fires 
are, are now sitting over the Gulf of Mexico, just waiting to be pulled in to this predicted severe weather pattern over the coming days. Also, as noted, according to scientific research, and I'm just going to point out this particular statement by the Union of Concerned Scientists, is that wildfire potential in many regions increases as the earth warms because of that increased rate of evaporation and longer duration heat and drought potential over certain regions. And right now in Central America, we are seeing a a extended drought period, much drier than normal conditions, and overall warmer than normal conditions contributing to the fires that we are seeing, injecting smoke into the air, which may also help to spike the potential for tornadoes over the coming days as those particles get loaded into the storms that do form. Now, I, I just, I didn't preload this, but I just want to, um, provide one more uh, indicator for you with regards to that, that, that is related to human caused climate change. And that is ocean surface temperatures, which, which are also contributing to this event. And we're gonna see if we can get Earth Null School loaded up for you guys so that I can provide this for you. And just wait one second here. So I know I've talked before about this, but the, these warmer than normal waters do provide a, a moisture source for storms. And in the overall environment of, of instability that has been occurring over the eastern section and central section of the US, this also provides extra fuel for the storms that we do see. So looking at the Pacific Ocean environment where we see the heightened storm track running in, the storm track is being fed by sea surface temperatures in the range of one to two degrees Celsius or more over many regions. So this particular storm track is getting quite a bit more moisture from the evaporative process off the surface of these oceans. And in the US central portion and in the east, moisture is feeding in from a warmer than normal Gulf of Mexico ranging in in, in the area of about one degree Celsius above normal, as well as warm, much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures off the US East Coast, ranging from about one and a half degrees Celsius above normal to, to up to seven degrees Celsius above normal in hot spots directly off the US East Coast. So the, the United States itself is is sitting in a much warmer ocean environment which is helping to fuel storms in regions of instability and we're going to see quite a lot of instability according to the weather forecasts over the central u.s so just an overall broad analysis of the predicted severe weather pattern for the u.s over the coming days a long duration event that is that may be one of the longer or longest severe storm outbreaks that we have seen in some time and some of the climate change related factors that are contributing to the severe weather potential that we are now seeing thank you for joining me and i'll be chatting with you soon